recognized for your opening remarks. Mr. Uh, Chairman, thank you for calling this hearing. Thanks to all of our witnesses for being here today. I look forward to their testimony, and I plan to listen and to learn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Naranjo, did I say your name right? I'm sorry for all yes, your you troubles. Yes, you did. Thank you. I'm sorry for all your troubles. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zimbro, tell my, tell my old friend Phil Gelston, I said hi. Yes, sir, I will do that. Very, so. uh... He had warm, warm regards to send to you. And well, fine lawyer, fine lawyer. Professor Steele, with respect to a divisional merger and then a bankruptcy, does the bankruptcy judge or does the bankruptcy court make a uh, distinction between a divisional merger bankruptcy in good faith and one in bad faith? Uh, yes, I think a bankruptcy judge would. I think they would, they would look at the bad co, to use the term that um, we've adopted from Judge Fitzgerald. Uh, they'd look at bad co and they'd ask the question, is that an entity that is in bankruptcy for a proper bankruptcy purpose? And if you set up a, a, a bad co that had real assets in it and it had the liabilities as well, you, you might say, yes, that's, that's a proper purpose for that, um, uh, for, for that entity. But the, the judge looks at what went on in the particular divisional merger and, and makes a decision. Let me explore that a minute. I, I've not ever practiced in bankruptcy court. Um, when a divisional merger is done and then there's a bankruptcy and you have two companies, I'll use the terms rich co and poor co <laughs> as opposed to good and bad. Um, does the bankruptcy, I, I assume that, that counsel for the creditors is raising fresh hell and saying this divisional merger was in bad faith and it was only done to avoid liabilities. Assuming that's, assume that's one of the allegations. Does the bankruptcy judge then hold a hearing and look to Porco and its present and prior management and say, tell me why you th did this divisional merger? And if they say to avoid our liabilities, does the bankruptcy judge then have authority to say, no, get out of my courtroom? The answer to that would be yes. You know, I'll unpack it just a little bit if I can. So um, you do the divisional merger. You know, there's nothing strange about a divisional merger in concept. I mean, you, you can have perfectly appropriate divisional murder, mergers and nobody thinks about it until we end up in bankruptcy. But if you do a, a divisional merger and then you put Badco or Cork, uh, Porco into, um, into bankruptcy, and the creditors, the victims, challenge the bankruptcy, say it was filed in bad faith, then the bankruptcy judge assesses the divisional merger, the Texas two-step, and determines whether it belongs in bankruptcy or not. And the, the standards that courts use vary a little bit from court to court, but the, the standard that will apply in Johnson & Johnson, for instance, which is the Third Circuit standard, the, the Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit, what the court will ask is, was there a valid bankruptcy purpose? That was the first question. And then the second question is, was this bankruptcy filed simply to gain a tactical advantage um, in litigation? And if it's not a valid bankruptcy purpose or it was solely for a tactical advantage, the court will kick the case out. And there is a hearing in Johnson & Johnson in, in its um, divisional uh, merger case next week um, okay. to address that question. Uh, let me ask um, Mr. Zumbro. It seems to me that the issue is, do we have a prophylactic rule passed by Congress 
that says you can't do a divisional merger and then a bankruptcy? Or do we rely on the bankruptcy judge to decide when a divisional merger is in good faith and bad faith? Bad faith meaning to av avoid uh, your creditors. Senator, I think that's right. I think the bankruptcy courts are in much better position to evaluate those issues than Congress. I don't think uh, a, a law that flatly prohibits uh, a bankruptcy file, uh, filing after a divisional merger is appropriate or necessary. I did a divisional merger recently for a content a media company that needed to sell a content library. So uh, if that company that bought the content library, library needs to seek bankruptcy protection in 10 years, why should it be precluded from doing so? I, I think the courts can, can make these determinations on a case-by-case -case basis. I understand. Could I ask Mr. Chairman for 30 more seconds? Could you weigh in on that, Mr. McClain? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, what Mr. Uh, Skill said, what Professor Skill said, is not accurate in the Fourth Circuit. In the Fourth Circuit, where these bankruptcies are all originally filed, bad faith is not enough to dismiss the bankruptcy. A judge could find it's in complete bad faith. It, it's, a, it's a scheme. It's a fraud. But yet, if, if the defendant, if the debtor can argue there's a reasonable likelihood of a success reorganization, a standard which is almost impossible to meet, uh, then the bankruptcy has to stay. So dismissal is not an adequate remedy, even for bad faith under the law of the Fourth Circuit, where they, of course, file. Secondly, with respect to this prophylactic rule, think about the, the implications of what I've just said. Uh, the, the, the court's hands are bound. They're bound by this governing, controlling precedent, and it doesn't matter if it's bad faith. That's not enough. Uh, judges are, of course, faced with the cases in front of them, and they do their best, faced with the cases in front of them. But when there was such a a widely used scheme where the wealthiest corporations go into bankruptcy to disadvantage some of their disfavored creditors, that is a universal problem that I would submit calls for a universal answer. Okay. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, I have been asked by uh, Professor Anthony Casey of the University of Chicago Law School, Law School and uh, Professor Parikh of the Lewis and Clark Law School to... Uh, offer statements on their behalf into the record. I haven't got objection. They'll be made part of the record. Thank you. I'm sorry to go over, Mr. Chairman. No, nope, not a problem. 